Hello, hello, guys. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? Is everything all right? Hi, Mario. Good evening. George, how's everything, George? How Pretty is good. your Thursday going? Pretty good, teacher. Oh, okay. Are, do you because normally... It's Tuesday. Yeah. So do you normally work on Saturday or Sunday? Uh, no. Normally, I work from Monday to Friday. Tomorrow, I come back to San Salvador. Oh, you're in San Miguel, right? Okay, now I remembered. All right. So, oh, okay. Okay, okay. That's nice. But so does the to... does the company, I don't know, does the company provide like a like a sort of building? Hi, good evening. Hi, Wendy. How yes. you doing? Yes, the company provide the, mm, okay. the, the building and all the things that we need, we we use for mm -hmm. the work. Ah, okay. Oh, nice, nice. That sounds amazing. Sounds really nice. Okay. Glad to hear that. Also, also, if I connect tomorrow, like listener is because maybe I'm driving to return to your to house. Saturday. Yes. But do you do you leave San Miguel kind of early, or do you have to wait? You know, like until very late at night. Uh, I'm go out like five maybe. Um, <sighs> Okay. It's so it's so late to to mm -hmm. arrive at San Salvador. Yes, exactly. That is what what I was thinking. You know that that um, if you were like gonna be able to reach the like classes, because I guess you'll be arriving. Um, where where do you live in San Salvador? Uh, near Ilopango. No, but so you kind of save the whole traffic from Soyapango and Upper. <laughs> okay, yes, so hopefully you can get home early. All right, get that. All right, but anyway, so thank you. I'm going to keep an eye, you know, on that situation. Hopefully you will be able to make it. Susanna, good evening. Great to see you. Wendy, thank you so much for joining. Wendy, how you doing? How's your, how is your day going? Everything all right? Is everything good? Thank you, teacher. So I hope you're having a really good day. And yes, as Jorge has said, tomorrow is Friday, so it got to count for something. <laughs> all right. Uh, Susana, how's everything going? Everything all right? Oh, I didn't see you. <laughs> okay. Okay, I just uh, asked. Sorry, you good evening, seconds. teacher. Good, good evening. evening. How you doing? Partner. Everything good? Is everything okay? I hope everything is going just fine. So guys, uh, thank you so much for joining uh, today's session. So we got session number four today, right? Um, of intermediate, we're gonna continue working uh, with some vocabulary, some expressions, and the uh, things related to that. Uh, also, uh, I asked you to um, to like check some vocabulary, right, uh, related to your work, uh, work or work um, related things. Uh, so we're gonna work on that today. And uh, yeah, pretty much we're gonna work a little bit on some definitions for today. Give me one second. Let me present my screen here. And guys, we are going to get started with some Salvadorian slangs or Salvadorian expressions. Um, I don't know if you have ever wondered uh, a couple of expressions, how you would explain that in English or what? how would you tell them um, uh, well, how would you kind of explain or what word you would use in English? So take a look at the following expressions I got for you. Uh, it says here, imagine you meet a foreigner, right? And asks about this expression. These are Salvadorian expressions. And I don't know, guys, if you have ever used them, they are slangs. So those are like words that are only for us Salvadorian. 
So we got expressions like stabbing yuca, que chivo, volado, right? Uh, I estoy harto, I don't know if you use other, other words. Um, dos que tres, I think that only us understand that. <laughs> uh, puchica and chele. Uh, is there any other expression that you normally use, guys? Hi, Tatiana, good evening. Thank you for joining. Uh, would you include any other word or slang here into the vocabulary list? Is there any other word that you use that is not like a bad word, right? Not like a swear language, <laughs> but just like slangs. Kiondas. Could be kiondas. Ah, yes. Kiondas. That's right. Okay. Okay, okay, I'm going to include that one. I forgot it. I was like trying to remember most of them. So, yes, so que ondas, right? Okay, is there any other expression that you would include here that you would add? Any other expression you use? You can add nombre chile. Ah, okay, I'm going to change that one that way. <laughs> So, exactly. So, I still don't know, you know, I'm still wondering about the meaning of nombre chele because I have heard it. Um, I don't normally use it, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, but, so imagine, if, guys, uh huh, tell me. With our, without our. Ah, nombre. nombre. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about yes. my Spanish. <laughs> Number. Okay. 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 We got it. All right. So, guys, but if I don't know, and if I ask you, if I see you, and I'm like, hey, excuse me, um, I heard this expression. What does it mean? I have no idea what it means, but I am listening to this word. How would you explain "está bien yuca" in English, or what expression would you use in English? So try to explain that word to me. What is that? When do you use it? How do you use it? It's so difficult. Okay. But when do you use a study in yuca? Is it formal? Is that an informal word? Um, is it okay to use it in all different scenarios or is that it's for any specific situation? It's informal and you can use that when it's almost impossible to, to do. Okay, something that is almost impossible. All right. Uh, what else would you add to Estavien Yuka, guys? What else would you include in there? The first one. So how would you explain it, guys? <laughs> so Jorge said it is super difficult, uh, almost impossible to be completed. Okay, sounds good. Remember, they are slangs. They are our slangs or our expressions. Any other way to explain the first? Uh, Susana, what else would you add? Wendy, what else would you add? In, in similar a uh, esta bien yuca. Yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. How would you explain that expression? I don't know, teacher. <laughs> in English. Oh, find a way. Uh, exactly. So it is not that easy. But find a way. Um, in what a scenario would you use it? Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, this is uh, similar to uh, the partner uh, talking to uh, Jorge. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Okay, it is something uh, that is difficult. All right. For example, uh, for example, uh, an exam, mm -hmm. <laughs> exam oh, okay. or evaluation is mm -hmm. difficult. In I Salvadorian say say yuca. <laughs> okay, okay. So probably for an exam, probably for a situation. And Jorge mentioned before that is an informal word. Okay, sounds really nice. Okay, let's go with next one, guys. Uh, or any of them that comes to your mind. 
So we have, I really want to listen to the explanation of number cello because I don't know what that is. Um, so <laughs> continue. Well, how would you say that? Or how would you explain that to the rest? I can use terrific, wonderful. <gasps> okay. So terrific, all right. Wonderful, all right. Do you use it for people? Do you use it for objects? Uh, in what kind of context do you use it? Um, I, I believe it's in a, in a situation, in a situation maybe. Mm -hmm. In what kind of situations? When you, uh, you agree with, with some situation or you maybe can maybe you win something okay you are, you are, you are happy to do that happen mm, okay 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 so something that you're happy all right something that you're happy to happen all right makes sense uh -huh. girls what else what else would you add in here for example, a beautiful dress, or for example, in, invite a, a, a place or a party, and Salvador says, oh, it's chivo. <laughs> okay, okay, so a dress or a party that can be chivo, all right. Is it for people? Do we use it for people? No, it's... it's in in my case, I I use for for things, for situation, for invitation, or oh, for example, a uh, a book or okay. other things. Okay, I like what Jorge oh, mentioned before. Okay, so so we can use it for books, for people, for parties, and uh, you can use terrific, right? Which is amazing, awesome. Okay, sounds really good. Guys, what is a volado? <laughs> Let's go with the others. I am pretty sure we have used them. So for, what is a volado? Volado, volado maybe. Volado is all things. Everything, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay. So maybe what's everything, we can... or maybe uh, something uh, that we don't know the name. Uh, okay, something that you don't know the name, something that you don't remember the yeah. name. Nice. Well, what can we use in English? Stuff. Stuff, exactly. Thing, thingy, stuff. Okay, okay, sounds good. Okay, that is one scenario, but there are other scenarios too. In what other scenario do you use volado? Related uh, to people. <laughs> related to people. Okay, for example. Uh, uh, for example, uh, Mira, uh, look at, at Carlos with her volado. Okay. <laughs> so look at Carlos with his volado. Okay. So that refers to a person, for, right? For, for example, do not do not know uh, the name of thing. Oh, but that would be with objects. I don't okay. Remember yet object. Okay, but we have like this other scenario that Jorge mentions that you refer to people, right? So like to the um, I don't know to the date, let's say, right? Probably a date. We can say. Or, a friend, okay, look at that volado. Oh, maybe. We use it oh, that way. No, right? Please. Maybe, Mario? An affair. Oh, an affair. Okay, so probably you you use it to refer to an, an affair. Remember, these are slangs, right? So these are words or expressions that we normally use in the street. And that someday, probably somebody will ask you, hey, what's that, right? So it's just an, an expression we normally use in the street. Okay. Um, hi, Silvia, good evening. We got this other expression that is estoy harto. I don't know if you use it. I don't know what other words uh, you use instead of estoy harto, but what's that? It's enough for me. Okay, it's enough for me, all right. I'm done. I hate. Dawn, okay. I hate it. Okay, okay. 
Uh, for example, I boring the same situation. I explication uh, at, at, at people or uh, boring the situation. The you're same bored. Situation. Okay, so yeah. you're bored. All right. In English, we use one expression that is I am fed up. So um, I don't know if you are familiar with that one, right? So we can use, oh, okay, I'm fed up. So I'm done, right? So I don't want to know more about that. All right, very nice, yeah. If we are bored, we are done, we are through, uh, that's too much. All right, cool. Now, dos que tres. <laughs> so when do you use it, guys? Do you use any of these ones? Uh, how would you use dos que tres to um, describe something? Or someone. Uh, for me, it is it's same uh, kind of. Okay, know, kind of. Regular, All right. Regular. Uh, no pretty, no ugly. Yeah. Okay. So uh, okay, kind of. Yes, sounds good. Any other? I can use that uh, that expression. Uh, maybe when you ask me, how was your day? So, so. Okay, so, so, kind of, sort of, okay. All right. So we use it for situations, uh, opinions, is it? Uh, maybe a normal situation. A normal situation, okay. So sounds all right, sounds good. Now we got to this part in which we go uh, for non-vecelli. Guys, when do you use non Um, Do you normally use it? Could be. Le, <laughs> le <puchica. laughs> oh, I skipped it, sorry. Okay, so what's puchica, guys? Um, I, I don't know. use puchica, I use puya, you know, <laughs> as a Salvadorian expression. <laughs> and as a, or a problem? Oh, okay. Puchica. Uh, uh, okay. It's a problem. Okay, when there is a problem. All right. So to ad admit, you are surprised. Oh, oh, uh, oh admir admiration for, for, for thing. Okay, maybe surprise, right? You can be kind yes. of surprised. surprised. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. I like it. I like the way you try to explain it. Guys, could any be, other way? It could be positive or negative, depends on the situation. Okay, what changes? What's the difference? The intonation. The intonation. How would you make it positive? Puchica. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and negative? Oh, oh. oh. Ah, okay. okay. Maybe the maybe the, so, so the intonation in, in in pu is if it's long, maybe mm -hmm. it's in 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 good. But maybe if it's uh, short in the pu, uh, probably is uh, bad things. Wow. I guess so. <laughs> okay. It's, because you, know, it's you so complicated. Uh -huh. Because you put all the the stress. Uh, yeah, in the, in the poop, chica. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you can express anger, right? So yeah. Surprise. What do you express normally with poop, chica? So it can be positive, negative, you said. Um, can you express happiness with that word? Most of the time is something posi positive that happens. Most, oh, okay. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I have never thought about it that way. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm learning a lot. All right, now we get to the work. <laughs> Guys, what is non -vecelli? Can you explain that to me, please? I mean, people tell me because my skin is kind of fair because of my skin color. But I think you can tell this expression, you can use this expression in anybody. So what's the difference? When do you use it? I guess the people use it. Uh probably when you are saying something okay uh, and they are not agree with that but it's not only because it's not but it's because uh you say something uh how to how to say it uh, mm -hmm. i'll give it a try <laughs> uh, 
uh, I don't so know you, if. Uh -huh. uh, you mentioned they are not uh, in agreement. Uh, uh -huh. For a thing, not true. Not true. Things uh, are not uh, true. Oh, a convocation. Mistake. Uh, mistake. Um, oh, oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> or something because it, it's not. Uh, it's not like a, yeah, like a truth or maybe because you say something that is uh, maybe uh, like a big picture, <laughs> like a, I, I, I knew, uh, uh, no, I don't got it, I don't got it, the, the, the idea, but. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm exactly that way, you know, how would you normally do I, it? How would you explain it? Uh -huh. I, I consider it is when you believe that the other people is saying Fla it's a lie or it's not, it's not true. And maybe oh. you want to, to, talk, to say, are you kidding me or are you crazy? Or I have heard also that uh, when, when the people are, uh, are saying that doesn't accomplish something, Mm -hmm. that, that it's supposed to be uh, easy, mm -hmm. and they say number chile. It's like a like disappointment. Yeah, something like that. Oh, okay. Because so. uh, it, it, they are referring mm -hmm. that was easy to do, but even of that, they they doesn't accomplish it or, or they doesn't success with the with the thing. Mm, okay, interesting. So maybe uh, you use that expression when you didn't accomplish something. Um, what was the other you mentioned? You don't oh. believe that is true you don't believe, uh huh. You don't believe the person. Oh, interesting. Okay, and you use it for it doesn't matter the skin tone, right? It doesn't matter the skin color. Uh -huh, so. <laughs> I, I guess here normally, uh -huh. uh, uh, I, I go to the barber shop, uh, so I'm not uh, nothing, uh, quite. I Why almost, black? It doesn't almost matter. Almost brown, <laughs> but, the, okay. but but the barber uh, always uh, refers to me. Hey, Chele. <laughs> ah, that's another one. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. It's right. like uh, Chele, hey, dude, right. something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, dude. Yeah, yeah because hey, Chele. you know the skin tone here doesn't really matter, and that is a good thing. There is no racism or anything. Okay. Cool. And guys, the last one that uh, Jorge mentioned that we normally use as well is que onda. <laughs> um, do you use it? It's um, how are you? Or how okay. Are you? No, although those are super formal. So how are you? How do you do? They are really formal ways to call somebody. Um, so what would these que ondas be? What expression sub, can we use? Sub, dude. Sub, <laughs> sub, sub yeah. It's like exactly. a cue. Yes. So what's you can, up? You can, sub. you can use that expression with people close to you. It's a informal way to to make the start the conversation. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Wait, there is another expression that people use in, um, in Canada that is really friendly and a slang that is like, what's cracky lucky, right? Uh, so you don't say, how you doing? How are you? But they are more like, hey, what's cracky lucky? So what's up? What's cooking? Um, and that would be kind of que onda. So yeah, give me yeah, one second, also, guys. So, uh, I guess from Puerto Rico or Republica Dominicana, I guess. They use, hey, que lo que manin is like a- Que lo que manin, okay. Yeah. I don't know if you- Interesting. If, if, if Interesting. They say, hey, que lo que manin, or it's like, hey, what's up, dude? And they, they use it a lot, yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Really, really interesting. So I have not heard that one, but sounds quite interesting as well. Um, guys, do you have issues accessing the session today? No. Yes, teacher. The platform Again. always, yes, always uh, requires you register your session. Oh. I guess. Did you? Yes. I guess is the. Uh, uh, I guess I asked you yesterday, or yes, yesterday I asked you regarding that because 
uh, now I'm using the my computer that I use on the first day, but anyhow, I, I need to, even if I uh, try to connect with my phone or with another uh, dispositive, I need to first register and then proceed to, to, to connect with with the link that they sent. Yeah. yeah, this is super weird. Uh, let me just... Something changed. Yeah, I, I guess it's, it, it, it's kind of a uh, security thing. Yeah, I would say there was an update, but but uh, did you try to did you try to access today with the ID? No, or with the with the link? Even if you put the ID, you need to register. They oh. send uh, because yesterday I do it. Uh, I have I have uh, two phones, uh, my mm -hmm. work phone and my own phone. In my own phone, I have my uh, my email, so mm -hmm. I I do it easily. But yesterday I tried to do it with my work phone, mm -hmm. and I had to register. Even I, I put uh, the the ID the ID, the, oh. the password, and and they I have to register. Then they send again the the confirmation of registration. So I need I needed to to click on the link and send me the copy to my WhatsApp and I, I, I did some things in order to to enter in the, in another phone. But I guess it's it's for uh, safety reasons for secure. They are updated that. Hopefully, right? But uh, let me ask uh, the guys from support if there is any other way you can access. I knew that yesterday was giving some issues, but I didn't know um, they are still, uh, it was still requiring that you uh, register or log in or enroll or something beforehand. So let me ask um, if there is any update and give, I'll give you a heads up tomorrow. All right, guys. Um, so really nice job with this, really nice job with the expressions we have. And I'm asking you this because giving an explanation was really hard, especially with that part of number Chile. I think that even we are Salvadorian, we know how to use it, but we don't know how to explain it. So it's really interesting. Claudia, good evening. Great to see you there. Enjoy it, Miss. Good evening. Um, good I think teacher. we have Mr. Gavarrete. Good evening. Great to see you. Uh, Manuel, hello. Good evening. I don't know if Manuel was joining a little later because of traffic. I'm not sure. But thank you so much, Manuel, for being here as well. So, um, guys, take a look it's now. It's yes. It's Right, yeah. number in in que onda? In ah. other... no, no, never mind. Uh, mm, there you go. Yeah, so it's just temporary. So, uh, take a look at this one. Now, guys, we're gonna try to give a little definition for some jobs. I have here a list of super strange jobs. Probably you have never heard about them. Probably you have heard about them. I'm not quite sure. And it says here, try to make a definition and explanation of these jobs. We have some expressions we can use, like this is a person who, this is a professional, because most of them are professionals who do something. In this, this is a job in which you are supposed to do this. So take a look at them. We have a bed tester. Uh, we have a professional cuddler. That is this one, right? A person who, uh, in other countries, people will pay um, so they can give them a hug, you know, or people pay um, so they can help them when they are feeling nostalgic, homesick. So that's a professional cuddler and they make money with it. So in some movies, you can see that. We have water slide tester, right? So imagine water slides, you test them, worm picker. So warm, the little animal, right? Professional pusher. What comes to your mind when you see professional pusher? So push is just like push. Uh, and this is super common in Japan. So what do you think this person does? And the last one, number six, that for me is the most disgusting or the gross of all of them 
is deodorant tester. So it says here, try to give, try to make a definition, right? Like in groups, we're going to work it out an explanation of these jobs. Of course, you can use Google, you can use any resource you have at hand, but let's try to make your own definition of these jobs. For example, what is, um, or what does a vet tester do? What do you think this person does? Uh, this is a person who, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm thinking about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> to prove a bed. We can, I, we can use the word test. We can use the word test. The bed is, is comfortable or is okay. kind of, of hard to, to take a, a nap there. Okay, so you said or, this is a person who tests a bed, right? Okay, to check the comfort. All right. Um, what do you think about this job? Do you think that it's a very interesting job? Do you think people make money or how do you think it works? I would like <laughs> to be a bed tester. What do that you what do you be think? my my my, my, my dream, dream job? job. <laughs> <laughs> what do you but, think are some of the I, activities? Uh-huh. But I think they don't earn so money, but so much money. Oh, you would be impressed. That is a problem. You, you'd be impressed. <laughs> you know, I was researching these jobs and I found that they are super strange, but also they are some of the um, uncommon well-paid jobs we can find. But of course you need some abilities, you know? So what do you think that a bed tester does? You said that it could be your dreams job, but what comes to your mind? Check in the comfort. How? <laughs> How would you check the comfort of a bed? Maybe Sleeping? Oh, I don't know. Uh -huh. Cool down and, and feeling the, 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 the clothes. The, okay, like the, the lining, the materials, the maybe. Or... Ah, okay, okay. And checking how many hours you can be sleeping probably there, right? <laughs> so something super strange. For me, very boring. No, boring please. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> no. Imagine, imagine a company. Can you tell me the name of some bed, uh, bed making companies or manufacturers for beds? In the form. In the form. In the form. Are they? Yeah, right. They are not Salvadorian. Is Capri Salvadorian? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, but we have in the phone. Let's talk about bigger companies. So in the phone, any other? Uh, there is another. Olympia. Ah, okay. I remember a long time ago there was this ad in TV offer from Soniare. Soniare, I don't know, something like that, that you could buy a pillow and you could sleep there like forever and ever. And that was super comfortable. So imagine that one of these companies tell you, hey, Wendy, we're going to give you some money just by sleeping there. What would you think about it? That would be amazing. Uh -huh. <laughs> that would be just fine. I mean, no more going to the office, no more waking up early. <laughs> For so me, boy, sorry. No. Oh my god. I don't know if uh, uh -huh. I, in the bell stores uh Sueña in Sonsonate a few years ago, uh when they opened, uh, I remember that they had uh, one girl that was in the in the pajama, pajama. Mm -hmm. It's, she was wearing the pajamas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she was all the day uh, lay down. Yeah. Maybe not sleeping, but but, but she was. Lay down on bed. Yeah. Lay down on the bed, uh, <gasps> testing or. Uh, I remember Doing she, nothing. She, yeah. <gasps> wow. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, why didn't I know? <laughs> okay, so that would be amazing, imagine. Okay, guys, so let's try to make, these are new jobs, strange jobs. They exist, but probably not in our country. 
and you don't make money from these jobs, but in other countries, you may make a little bit of money. So um, what is the definition? What good definition can we make? And what do you think this person does, right? Remember, you have some prompts here, like this is a person, this is a professional, this is a job in which, you know, just for you to try to make some ideas. Um, give me just a moment. Hi, Raquel, good evening. So we are going to make some groups here. Give me a second. Next song. Hi, Mario. I got to Mario, so I'm still trying to figure out how to how to make it work. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, guys. So I am inviting you to go to some groups. So um, Mr. Baye, you stay here. Uh, Sylvia, you stay here. Uh, Tatiana, I think Tatiana is not available at the moment, but uh, she is gonna be a listener, I believe. And Wendy, you stay here. The rest, guys, let's go to the groups. You may take a picture or you may take a screenshot of this slide. And so you can try to work on this uh, vocabulary. Um, I have already enabled the option uh, so you can share your screen. So guys, feel free to share your screen, you know, so we can have some information here. Uh, the rest guys, let's go, let's join the groups. Uh, hi, Norma, good evening. So if you can join the group, that would be nice. So let's go and let's join it. All right, so oh, she's there. Okay, thank you, Norma. Um, and, and Susanna, if you can join the group, that would be super, super nice. If you are in the computer, you have breakout rooms. Okay, guys, there you go. So you can share your screen and you can tell us a little bit about these super weird jobs. Um, we have five minutes to complete the, the definition. So there you go. Um, guys, try to try to share it, right? So try to put it together, try to make a definition together so we can later share that.
Hi guys, how you doing? Uh, did you finish? Do you have already some definitions? Did you find, did you find um, some information about the jobs? Oh, did you finish with the jobs, guys, or not yet? Do you need more time, or are you ready? More time, teacher. My group. They uh, our says nothing. Why not, guys? Talk to Wendy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know, guys. Uh, well, uh, Tatiana, I think that she's. I don't see her camera, so I believe she's going to be a listener. And Anna too. Uh, Sylvia, are you ready? Uh, Mario, are you ready, guys? Did you share like the the what you were able to get from the preview from the jobs? Oh, okay. So Marty says that he has a meeting. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Uh, Sylvia, are you available? Okay, give me a second. Let's do something. Okay, uh, Wendy, let's join the group uh, because the other guys uh, have not finished. So we can go and practice a little bit. Okay, teacher.
right, guys. Uh, thank you for coming back. So let's take a look at a couple of jobs here. Uh, we already discussed kind of the bed tester. Let's go with the second one, the professional cuddler. Um, guys, what, guys, what do you think this is about? So what is the job? What's the definition? And what are some of the obligations, responsibilities, or activities they got to do? I consider this, this, this is a professional who provide cuddle, but, okay. but this person had a lot of problem with the stage of pandemic because oh, okay. <laughs> nobody wants to, to have close to other people. Like physical contact. <laughs> yes, okay. Physical contact. Oh, interesting. Okay. So professional hugs, you know, professional company. Kind of weird, I have to say, but okay. Anything else, guys, that you want to include about the first? I mean, number two. Nothing else? All right, let's go with number three. So what do you have for number three, guys? It says water slide tester. So Susana, what can you tell us about the water slide tester? Uh, this is a personal who check to see if the water slide in hotel. I bought them. Um, um, is a professional who? No, no, is it necessary? Um, this is a job in which or in where? In hotel, um, but is a, is, it's his experience is a, a safe, a fun, and the bot. Okay. So it's a person who checks the slides and normally, as you said, they work in hotels, right? Okay, so hotel, vacational places, park. okay. Aquatic parks. Aquatic parks, Aquatic parks yes. Water father. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be a water slide tester? Would you like to be this person? I cannot even swim very well, so no. <laughs> Depends, teacher. Be because could be dangerous is the aquatic park is so big and and the slide is higher. Yeah, exactly. They it are dangerous. Risky. It's super risky. Yes. So they are kind of dangerous or um, risky jobs. All right. Thank you. What about next one? Worm picker. So what do you understand by worm picker? Uh, Claudia, do you have anything to share with us about being a worm picker? Did yes, you we are, anything? Yes, we have. We search in Google and we're, we're seeing that uh, it's actually in a job in Canada, in a farm as they pay you for pick worms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you can, you have to pick five thousand worms by day mm -hmm. and you have to put in a box mm -hmm. and you have to be al pendiente <laughs> they, they, the night. They, they feed them feeding them okay and it's a very disgusting job for me <laughs> okay so it would be a disgusting job so you wouldn't and like they, to be a worm picker uh maybe for the salary <laughs> Uh -huh. Okay. It depends. Okay. Just but if the a, salary is good. Yeah, it's a hard work because you have to be under the sun. Mm, that's a very good yeah. point. Okay. So Canada. Yeah. All I right. Hear, and they use them for 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 carnada. For for bait for fishing. Yes, yes. Uh huh. Yes. They use it for fishing. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for that. I'm sorry, Jorge. Go ahead, please. No, teacher Joss, I, I hear about 5,000. There is a lot of 5,000 words per day, Claudia said. Yes. So it's, it's a, a lot. lot. But if I am if I'm not wrong, the salary was like $40,000 per year. 
Uh, I yes, don't know. Like yes, 4,000, yes, right? Yes, they paid you like that. Fifteen, fifteen, fifteen dollars by day for forty, forty, forty hours. Maybe per hour, fifteen dollars per hour, I believe. Yes, 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 per uh -huh. hour. Fifteen dollars per hour and like forty thousand dollars per year. Imagine but, more than they pay us in El Salvador per hour. <laughs> but, okay. but this this kind of work could be for eating. I'm sorry. This kind of work could be for eating too. Um. Well, I understand that worm picking is not for eating. Just for fishing. No, it's just for fishing. It's the kind of little fish that are put into the fishing cane so you can get more fish. Mm -hmm. So not for human, but I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Chinese people. People. Uh, exactly. People eat the scorpions and everything. So who knows? <laughs> okay. Protein. Crazy. Great protein. <laughs> okay, guys, number five, professional pusher. Uh, Manuel, what can you tell us about a professional pusher? DJ, this is a, a weird, a weird profession. All of them are, yes. But uh, I was uh, searching in, in Google, but mm. I, I didn't know about this type of, of, of job. Okay. But I, but it was a, an images uh, in the in the railroad or train in in China. Yes. Yeah, this in, uh, this is a person who push or help to to people to in to the help. to the train. <laughs> okay. So in sensory push push. Uh, yeah. Imagine guys that you are in the bus. Um, and because there are the so subway. many people in the bus, you're not able to fit in. So a professional pusher, they wear <laughs> uniforms. Yeah, and they push people in. But professionally. Uh -huh. <laughs> Guys, would you like to be a professional pusher here? Imagine the 44, imagine the, the 101 bus. So, uh -huh. so do you think it could work? The driver. Teacher, the driver, uh, we are in the Salvador, are professional in pusher because they said, please pass to the center. In the ah. center, there are space. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, behind you can for, can fit in the spaces. <laughs> but, but you know, that is different that people push you in. So yeah. <laughs> that's a professional pusher, a person who pushes people in. All right. Many professionals. And, yeah. And imagine it's a job. So super crazy. Uh, yeah. The last one, guys, deodorant tester. So Norma, what did you listen about the deodorant testers? Would you like um, to be a deodorant tester? Um, uh, this is a person uh, to see if uh, the de deodorant is working correctly in covering the complacent odor that the body makes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is one thing. And I was reading also about this super weird job. Do you know the meaning of armpit? Do you know this part of your body? Armpit. Yeah, are, are you familiar? Yes. This is a part of your body. Yes, that. <laughs> exactly. So your armpit is like the this part of your body, right? And I was like listening that an uh, deodorant tester is a person who smells uh, different yeah. people, you oh know. God. Uh, yeah, to identify the best deodorant for people or because you have different smells in deodorant. So I was like, what? That's unbelievable. This Not a, a job a, for me. This is a professional, I think, uh, it is. Who, work, who work in a, in a laboratory. Definitely, they work in laboratories because they need to analyze the skin, they need to analyze yes. your smell. Imagine yeah. if you do a sport, so we, um, our uh, sweat is a stronger, right? The smell is a stronger, so, or the other is a stronger, so, <laughs> yeah, this, this super crazy. Weird job. <laughs> super weird job, oh, jobs, definitely. I'm sorry? There are other expressions that we can analyze in other class. Another expression? 
uh -huh, that that we can ana analyze like we made before uh -huh. for the other and testers. Expressions. Yes, like like Nambechele or Ah yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, you are definitely right about it. So, guys, whenever we are trying to give a definition, we use a couple of words that are going to help us with that. One of them is who. So, for example, here we say like, oh, this is a person who, this is a professional who, uh, this is a job in which. So, all of these words help us uh, um, jump you know, from giving a normal sentence, a super simple sentence into a more complex idea. So who is going to be our best friend here? For example, normally when we start basic level, we say, I take a shower, I go to the bathroom, I brush my teeth. When we go to intermediate, we start using other expressions like, oh, I take a shower and after that, or uh, before I finish all my activities, I do this. So when we put all the ideas together, uh, we are becoming from basic to intermediate level. This is what we do with who. So who help us put ideas together to link ideas? Take a look at this one. We have, for example, I usually speak to the woman. And the same woman is the one who owns the hotel. So how can I put these two ideas together, not to be chopping words, not to say, I usually speak to the woman, she owns the hotel. Sounds weird. I'm not connecting ideas here. So what I do, I'm going to take the she, right? Because she is the same woman. And I'm going to use the expression who to put them together, to link them, to sound better, to say less and to make a little bit of more intermediate sentences, let's say. So look at this. I usually speak to the woman who. So who is going to put the two ideas together? This is why we say this is a job or this is a person who. This is a job in which. So this is the woman who. And look at this, who owns the hotel. I don't need to repeat she. I don't need to repeat the woman. I'm just putting together the expression who. And something super important, I need to respect if this is a third person right here, who owns the hotel. If this is past, I need to respect uh, if it is past and I need to make it in past, who owned the hotel, etc. cetera. So um, these are some words that are gonna help us a lot and who normally we use it for people. So whenever we are talking about a person, we're gonna to try to use expression who. Now look at the following, we also have that. Uh, that is going to do exactly the same, but look at this one. Uh, she is the teacher who came to our school last week. Oh, I'm already using who. So look at this one. She is the teacher that came to our school last week. Oh, and look at this one. So normally who and that, we can use both, right? Uh, to talk or to make sentences, to connect ideas. The next one we have is, this is the house, which, which is referring back to house. This is the house, which belongs to my family. I don't need to repeat house. This is the house, the house belongs to my family. Mm, I don't need to say that. This is the house, which belongs to my friend. Uh, but also I can say, this is the house, that belongs to my friend. So, which can be used alternative with that, and who can also be used, you know, together with that. So that is super useful here. Um, and here we have that can replace who, or can replace which in defining relative clauses. This is the name of the grammar, con uh, the grammar structure, defining relative clauses, but in other words, is connecting sentences, right? Uh, to give more intermediate ideas. So that is the that. Okay, now um, in your material, in your book, you have a couple of exercises um, using uh, this topic. And uh, we, this is exactly what we are gonna do. So take a look at your material. This is page number uh, 12. And here you have how to use adjectives, adjective clauses with who. Remember, you can use who, you can use that, and that will be okay. 
So look at the example. He is the manager who, ah, who thinks all employees are lazy. I'm using third person, thinks. The businessman who made decisions, oh, made decisions because that was in past. The employee who is organizing a training. So pretty much I'm just connecting ideas here. So take a look at the exercises we have right here in exercise number five. And this one I think is kind of easy. It says, uh, write sentences using the relative pronoun who and add the missing words and conjugate the verbs. So we have here, the president, someone, lead the company. Yesterday we saw the word lead, right? Uh, that is guide. So the president and someone, they mean exactly the same. So the president is someone who leads the company. Oh, I'm putting together two ideas. Can you try to do the others? Can you complete the others? We have here premium users, an autocratic manager, a chaotic manager, oh, sorry, chaotic managers, a CEO, and a general contractor. So how would you put all of these ideas into only one sentence, right? If, guys, I'll give you five minutes, try to complete it on your own, and then you share your sentences.
Come on, I mean, that's guys. Are you ready, guys? Do you need more time? We need more time, teacher. Okay, no problem. Take your time. I'll give you some more minutes. I have a question, teacher. Yes, George. Tell me, tell me. When you use cook, mm -hmm. you need to do the plural of the, ne the next part of the, it's always. Mm, no, it depends. Um, let me explain it here. So for example, in this case, 
you have the president. The president is singular. Someone is going to be always singular. So the verb has to be singular too, like third person singular. The president is someone who. So it depends on the plural. That's the one you're going to use. For example, premium users, this is plural. People, it is plural. So the verb here in upgraded, oh, that's past, but we don't need plural. Uh, this is present, right? So we have manager, singular, someone is singular. Also, we have makes, third person singular. Uh, so it really depends on the subject. Uh, the verb can be pluralized or it can be singular. So if you take a look here, we have some plural like this one. And also we have people, so that will be plural. So no need to add anything else to the verb. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So pretty much the change, you will notice that in present simple. In past, you don't need plural or singular, doesn't matter. In future, with will, doesn't matter either. So just present simple. Um, guys, let's take a look at what you got, right? So number one says the president then is someone who leads the company. What about number two, premium users? are people who upgraded to platinum service. Okay, people users, plural, are people who upgraded. Who upgraded, upgraded to okay. platinum services. Okay, to platinum services, very nice. Actually, that's it. So are people who, and then we don't change verbs or anything. Yes. Do you yes. have it like this, guys? Yes. Okay. Okay, hope the rest has it like this. Okay, <laughs> let's go with number three. So number three says an autocratic manager. How? What do you say now? What do you have in number three? An autocratic manager is someone, someone who makes mm -hmm. decision alone. Someone who, uh, this is singular, so makes, uh -huh, makes yes. decisions yes. alone. Do you have it like this? Yes. Nice, yes. nice, super, super. Number four, guys, uh, chaotic managers. What do you have in there, chaotic managers? Are people. Are people. Who give. Who gives. For a control. Oh, we have here plural, plural, yes. plural, give. who? Oh, so give, we don't need the S. Mm -hmm. Very nice, good, good, good. Number five, number five is singular. A, per, a CEO, CEO. so a CEO is yes. an important person. Singular. Is an important person. Who makes? Who makes? Yes. Yes. And the rest. <laughs> okay, yes. very nice. Number six, guys. The last one. A uh, general contractor. So a general contractor. Employee is who provides. Is an employee who provides. Provides, exactly. And that's it. So it's not that complicated. Just remember, oh, singular, I need to have a third person singular in present. So here we have a little bit of definitions. But guys, I have a little something for you. I have a little video to show you. And we are going to try to make a definition out of different uh, managers we can get. So take a look at this one. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. In this exercise, we have here match the managerial styles. But before we do this, I, wanna, um, I want you to listen to a video. I want you to watch it. And we have a couple of different type of managers. We have the autocratic manager, democratic manager, paternalistic manager, and we have something called a uh, laissez fail. So we're gonna listen to them. It's like, oh, what's that? Super strange words. But I want you to listen to them and I want you to try to come up with a definition, right? What is an autocratic manager? What is the other one? Give me one second. Uh, I'm gonna share the video with you uh, so we can listen to this one in groups. Um, Please guys, try not to have the subtitles on. Uh, try just to listen to it and uh, come up with some ideas. Give me a moment. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to share the, the link. Um, unfortunately, uh, we are not able to play the video here. Wait, what's going on? Okay, there we go. So I'm sharing this link, all right. Do you prefer to watch it alone or do you prefer to watch it in groups? I think group work can help. Or do you prefer to watch this video alone? Let's Hello. give it a try. Uh, do you Why, guys? Okay, okay, that's all right. That's okay. Okay, just I have a little, um, no recommendation, but a little request from you. Don't play subtitles because the idea is not to read it. The idea is to exercise your ear. So listen to the description. You will listen to four. You will listen to, let me see. Um, mm -mm. The autocratic, democratic, transformational, and laissez-faire. That is one that we have right here. So listen to the description, listen to the video, and give us a little, guys, a little definition of them. I'm going to give you five minutes. Watch the video on your own. I'm going to close my microphone, not to interrupt you. And... Uh, um, and give us a little definition with your own words, please, what you understood from that video. So you will not listen to all of them. You will just listen to four. So guys, we have four minutes, five minutes to listen to the video and try to make a definition. But please don't play subtitles. No le vayan a poner subtitulos, guys. Don't play subtitles. Pueden bajarle la velocidad. You can reduce the speed, right? But no subtitles, please. So no vamos a leerlo, vamos a escucharlo, all right? Eh, el, el link está acá. So I shared the link right here. So you can watch it and give us definitions, guys. Cinco minutos. You got five minutes.
Hello. Guys, how are you doing? Uh, do you need more time? I need more time. No problem. I'll give you like two or three more minutes.
All right, guys, let's try to share um, what you have, what you have understood so far. And uh, people, I just got a question for you. Uh, do you find the, the exercise easy or difficult to understand? How difficult did you find it? Or how easy did you find it? Was it difficult? So, so, teacher. <laughs> Okay, um, well, what was the difficult part? The vocabulary or the the speed, how fast it was? Maybe the speed that they that he is talk. Did you reduce the speed? No, I try to to hear in that. In like the in an Okay, the normal way of talking. All right, got it, got it. Amazing, exactly. I mean, if if at some point uh, you can reduce the speed just to understand better, that's okay. But that I is, have, mm -hmm. I have problem to understand the the number three lazier. The is it fair? Like mm -hmm. lazy first. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I just understand and understood that is a. Uh, leader that in their team there are autonomic mm -hmm. maybe yes exactly i mean you don't find all of them here but you will see democratic autocratic laissez fair and there is another one that is uh, trans, uh, transformational if i'm not mistaken so mm -hmm. exactly so a laissez fair is like uh you know what there is something to do, but Jorge, you're good at this. I'm going to give you the opportunity to shine and bright. <laughs> so they let you do, they let you take control of some situations. Yes, Mario? Mario? Yeah, the, uh, the, does, uh, the laissez faire is in, is, uh, it's a phrase in French that means, uh, like a little bit or or let it, let it do it. Mm. It's something like that. Yeah, so fail, right? Right from uh, the French word like do. Yeah, so, it's, exactly. It's an expression exactly. On, on French, yeah. Yes, so it's more like, um, you know what? Uh, I'm your boss, but you're good at what you do, so do it. <laughs> okay, yeah, pretty like much you that is the idea. It's like that you empowered, empowered <laughs> the the people to to do what they know yes exactly i like that word so empowerment all right guys so um democratic just mario oh oh no, sorry sorry okay. <laughs> i saw your hand up okay all right uh democratic guys what is or how would you describe a democratic boss or a democratic manager based on what you understood i understood Mm -hmm. that they say is when the leader say say something uh, they do some that that the leader say mm -hmm. is okay is uh, democratic democratic okay no autocratic autocratic mm -hmm. autocratic Yes, exactly. Autocratic. All right. Yeah, autocratic is so it's a kind of boss who um, doesn't give you the opportunity, right, to uh, do or express ideas. It's just do it. <laughs> exactly. Very nice. Okay. What else, guys? Did you get anything about the democratic boss? I guess the they uh, the democratic boss they include uh the the others in the the situation that they take i guess okay, okay so they include others all right also uh, is, yes has a this this style has a problem with the when you want to take a quick decision why uh, because this is democratic i think they involve many of the participants of the team. 
Very nice, exactly. So they need to get like in agreement, right? So what What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And they try to find a point in common. Or, mm -hmm, exactly, all right. So it takes a lot of time, very nice. So we have democratic, autocratic, uh, laissez faire, right? Uh, that is the kind of, as you said, do what you know. So I'm going to let you work, right? And I don't interfere with the things you do. And there was one more that is a uh, transformational. So what did you get from transformational managers? I I understood, teacher, the transformational is the the best way for leaders to motivate and to follow the same point. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, the people uh, felt uh, uh, emotional mm -hmm. and, and other factors I, I don't remember, but for me, uh, that I understood the people was talking is the best, the best leadership. I, I think that uh, is uh, it's a characteristic of the, is a, uh, for the good leader, uh, okay. because they they teach you to to do something, they they keep the uh, the people uh, uh, involved in the the decision and also in the in the work, and they give you all the all the support that you as as a coworker need. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Anything else, guys? I understood, teacher. They have uh, did this kind of leader has a higher intelligent emotional. Okay. Yes. And and also there there are uh, good communicators. Oh, okay. Oh, and the okay. are of your co-workers. Oh, okay, okay. Really and, interesting, and, guys. And, mm -hmm. and one characteristic this this leader is a, is a humble. It's a humble person. Okay, okay. Guys, based on what you heard, based on what you just told me, what kind of leader do you have? <laughs> do you have a good leader? Uh, do you have kind of a democratic boss or manager? Autocratic. Autocratic, oh my God. <laughs> okay, is it? Uh, uh, well, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, Why? I, I am in... It's kind of in the transition to one bus to another. Okay. Uh, the problem is that both are my friends. Okay. And we are we are friends uh, like uh, all we know each other for mm -hmm. all the life. So Have you been working together for long? Sorry, say again. Uh, yeah. Have you been working together for a long period of time? Yeah, I actually have 10 years working with them, but I oh, know so them uh, since we were uh, we were a child. Oh, okay. So we live uh, in the same uh, neighbor. Uh, so that's why maybe it's kind of rough, the, 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 the things. Oh, yeah, okay. It, not only the, the transition, it's, it's, it's all because, you know, we have to... Uh, to see and to you need to comply to know, to some responsibilities. Mm -hmm. and, but the thing is that the both are like uh, you have to do it because I say it. Oh. Uh, and the problem is that I know how to do the things because uh, we have kind of the same time okay. doing the same the same things. So I know how to do it. Okay. But sometimes. I I want to hear what is their opinion, okay. or because they only ask me to do the some the some things, mm -hmm. but they doesn't care if I am doing another things or how many time I will take to do it. Mm -hmm. So, so they I, know they trust you. However, they want to control it, kind of like that. Yeah, and okay. I know that. I know the, the time that uh, they take to to do all the things that they ask me, mm -hmm. but 
they want to I do it now. No okay. in a few minutes now. And okay. that is kind of uh, rough and difficult because uh, actually we are afraid and sometimes we have some uh, how, how do you say? Inconveniences. Uh, yeah, you something have, like that. Yeah, you kind of, you know, yeah, crash. And, and then another is, is kind of, uh, he wants to be like a autocrat or he's like autocratic, but okay. he wants to be a, a what do you think? Uh, uh, what do you prefer? Or, <laughs> or how do you think that it's better to do this? Mm -hmm. He tried to, because he knows that the another boss is, it's not the, uh, it's a Open. good, yeah. But uh, he tried to, to do it better, okay. but also uh, I guess he's, uh has the the same themes of mm -hmm. the Nuer boss. It's oh. kind of rough. Eh? Okay, okay. Well, the thing is that you have known each other for so long. So that is the point, I guess. Yeah. You have been working in the company, you have been friends for a long period of time. and. There are crashes, so yeah. All right, all right. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, we have encountered different kind of managers or bosses in our lives already. Guys, um, <laughs> we always need more time. Before we leave today, um, I just got a little something for you. And uh, uh, since tomorrow we are finishing, oops, wait. Since tomorrow we are finishing the um, unit number one, right? And with number one. So we are going to be checking a little bit of something here. Give me a moment. And I have some questions for you that I want you to select one for. Um, we don't exactly have other presentations or I mean, not something that is so long, but uh, I want you to take a look at these three questions. We have been working on these uh, words or this vocabulary. And uh, guys, for tomorrow, I want you to just uh, prepare, right? We are going to get started with two minutes, then we're gonna go for three minutes, four minutes and so forth. So um, I'm giving you the topics because I want you to think beforehand. There are th three questions here. So we're gonna work on these three questions. Number one says, what do you think about gossiping? We were saying yesterday that is adding or sharing information that is not true. Number two says, have you ever called a company to void a transaction for you? So we said yesterday you are kind of familiar with the word void, that is cancel, right? Reimburse money. Or number three, which do you think is a profitable business? So remember that profit is like the money that you earn from a business. So which do you think is a profitable business? Um, in El Salvador, food, shoes, uh, selling, importing, exporting, what do you think can be profitable? Um, so try to think, right, uh, beforehand about these three questions. And tomorrow we are going to have a short, you know, kind of presentation, but it is not a presentation. It is more like impromptu speech. So we are going to try to talk about this and give opinions, right, uh, working on fluency. So um, you can take a look at the questions, you can take a screenshot of the questions, whatever works for you, and uh, think beforehand so it can be a little easier, right? Um, mm -mm, pretty much that is the only thing that I have for you. And please help us with unit number one in the platform, guys, to avoid the guys from support calling you and asking you to, um, to work on it. Antes que se vayan, guys, solamente let me have your attendance. Uh, Anna, I saw Anna here. I haven't seen Ariela, but she was sick. Claudia was here. Uh, Cristia, did Cristia get in? No, right. She's not here. Diana, no, Diana's not here. Jorge, George. Thank you. Juan Carlos, I don't see Juan Carlos. Manuel Palma, here, teacher. Is there. Concepción, I don't see Concepción. María Elena, I don't see María Elena. Mr. Villeda. Here. Thank you, and Mr. Valle. I'm here. Thank you so much, Nelson. Present, Miss. Norma. Present, teacher. Thank you, Olga. I don't know, I have not seen her from day one. Silvia. Uh, Susana, 
Yeah, Susana was there, I think. Yes. Tatiana, Susana was there too. And Wendy. Teacher. Okay, thank you so much. All right, guys, thank you and agradecerles por la asistencia. Uh, remember that como requisito de Insaport, necesitamos 120 minutos eh, para completar el 80%, right? De attendance en todo el módulo. Guys, eh, si tienen alguna dificultad, les recomiendo que siempre se conecten para evitar, you know, eh, cualquier tipo de situación eh, later que puedan tener algún inconveniente con Insaport. It only nos indican que van a estar como oyentes, and we are good, no problem. Thank you, guys. Uh, so, lo, Wendy, me ayuda unos minutitos, please, para el one-on-one. -on -one. And, guys, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Have a wonderful night, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, bye, bye, Anna. <laughs> okay. Sec. Gracias, Wendy. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to steal a couple of minutes from your time. <laughs> okay. So. Bad, bad day for two. <laughs> I died. Mm -hmm. oh, no worries. No worries. So pretty much in uh, this session one on one, right? Okay. Solo es para okay. just to check un par de cositas, uh, you know, um, con las que le podemos ayudar, le podemos guiar. Algunos okay. les he dejado tareas adicionales or okay. specific activities uh, para ver como qué es lo que más necesitamos or qué es lo que más nos está costando, right? Um, okay. So, eh, solo una cosita. Well, primero, thank you so much for the participation. Siempre la veo, you know, super atenta participando, giving opinions. So amazing, amazing, super, super good. And lo único que he notado por ahí, usted me dirá, you know, es que... Um, Tendemos como a traducir. <laughs> we tend to, <laughs> creo que lo vamos pensando en español. I think that you think about it in Spanish. Y yeah. lo intenta decir como en español. Creo que eso es una yeah. de las cositas que nota. Usted dígame, what do you think? Yeah. Yes, I tra traduce, traduce. <laughs> okay, but but just a little question. Mm -hmm. ¿Lo piensas o si lo va pensando en español? Do you think about it in Spanish? Yes. Y yes. luego yes. hace el cambio. Yes. Estamos haciendo doble trabajo entonces. Bye. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. Bye. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Because nos da la idea, you know, de entonces significa que nuestro cerebro piensa dos veces. So podemos mejorar la fluidez. We can definitely improve it. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio. We will do a little exercise. Le voy a hacer preguntas. I'm going to ask you questions. Eh, creo que son fáciles. Um, y respóndame lo más rápido que pueda. The fastest. A mí, lo primero que se le venga, the first thing. Súper importante. Enfóquese en la pregunta. Eh, respóndame rápido, súper rápido. Y veamos, you know, eh, porque muchas veces eh, el traducir es solo porque mi cerebro se queda pensando mucho en qué fue lo que dijo, qué voy a decir. Y, y ahí oh, es no. donde viene la traducción. But veamos si nos funciona this way and what we can do. Um, okay. So, Wendy, what's your favorite color? Pink. Okay, <laughs> what's your favorite animal? No. Where do you live? I live in Santana. Ah, okay. Are you in Santa Ana right now? Yes. Okay. Uh, how many do you have brothers or sisters? A uh, brother. Okay. No sisters. And other. A sister only, but only with my father. Oh, okay. Okay. No problem. Do you have babies? No, no. I and are you? Oh, you're single. Okay, so yeah. okay. Okay, next question. <laughs> okay, um, do you like chocolate? Yes. Okay. What's your favorite food? Beef. Oh. Beef steak or steak. Okay, steak. All right. That got it. Uh, do you like movies? Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite movie? Romantic or comedy? Comedy. Comedy. Okay. Comedy. Do you do you like Adam Sandler? Yes. 
<laughs> or who, who is your favorite actor? My favorite actor is all oh, is Cantin Flat. <laughs> ah, the Mexican guy. Mexican. Do you have a favorite movie from Cantin Flat? Uh, oh, oh, all the movies. Very good for me. <laughs> yes, yes, Cantin Flat is a really good actor for me too. Yes, um, I with my parents. <laughs> do you watch movies with your parents? What what movie with my ah, parents? Ah, okay. Yes. Do you like Pedro Infante? No. Uh, Just cantinflas. Yeah, cantinflas only. Because in Mexico you have cantinflas, resortes, and capulina. Do you like them too? No, mm, no, no. Not My really. Cantinflas. No, no. Your favorite is cantinflas. Okay. Pregunte. ¿Y va pensando las respuestas? <laughs> Yo digo que sí, pero, o sea. Pero les pensó en... No, okay, eh, okay. enfocaba en las preguntas. Uh -huh. oh, ok, ok. First question. ¿Iba traduciendo las preguntas? ¿De you translate them to Spanish? ¿O de una la agarraba? Mm, no, algunas las traducía. Pero, ok, but, eh, porque me respondió súper rápido. You answer really quick. Creo que solo con la de sus hermanos se quedó pensando. Uh -huh. but, but the rest, <laughs> creo que sí, ¿verdad? La primera. En la primera, sí. you got them. Ok, perfect. So, con listening estamos bien. Now, second thing. Las respuestas. Las iba traduciendo. Were you, eh, aparte de las hermanos, ¿tradujo las demás? Were you translating the rest? No. No. Ok, there you go. So, significa que si podemos hablar, podemos empezar a crear ideas sin traducirlas. So, we are going to avoid translating that much. Ahora vamos con preguntas un poquito más largas. Let's go with questions que me requieren una respuesta ya no de si no. Um, so, eh, bueno, intente igual dar, darme respuestas. No se preocupe si están bien, no se preocupe si están mal. Solo dígame lo primero que se le den, all right? Um, so, what, what, is your, uh, what, what is your morning routine? What do you do every day? I get up, I take a shower. Mm -hmm. I uh, eat my breakfast, mm -hmm. I go, go to the work. I mm, okay. Ah, okay. And what do you do at work? What is your job like? Um, my job is all office. I, okay. I, wear, I wear WhatsApp, I wear email, I call a, a customers attend or uh, attend the, the customers mm -hmm. and travel uh, sell the travel tickets and mm -hmm. make a, a do you make or... reservations yes reservations hotel reservations. reservations for hotel reservations a uh, travel ticket reservation ah, okay. uh, nice. and translate a package Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Very nice. Really, really cool. It sounds good. Pensó lo que iba a decir? Pensó lo que iba diciendo? No. No, no la pensó, right? Really? No. Vaya. Entonces, es lo que vamos a hacer. Normally, cuando uno piensa en español, eh, se le mezcla ambos vocabularios. Se le mezcla español en... Eh, Ponemos en el inglés palabras que no utilizamos porque lo vamos pensando en es donde más, eh, you know, cambiamos palabras. So, eh, hay una palabrita por ahí que la escuché y vamos a revisarlas, you know. Una de ellas fue explanation eh, y otra fue mistake. So, eh, no, creo que me estaba diciendo de algo. So, explanation son las explicaciones, right? We call it explanation. Mm -hmm. So, explanation. Another word that we normally use is mistake. So, cometemos errores. Ah, oh, we make mistakes. So, eh, creo que son de las, de las palabritas que la escuché que me las puso en inglés, pero con un poquito de español mezclada. <laughs> las usamos en Spanglish. Y no, no está mal, right? It's not bad. Pero por lo que se me acaba de responder, entiendo que podemos hacerlo sin ir pensándolo tanto en español. So, le voy a dejar un ejercicio. I'm going to give you a little exercise. Um, oh, primero, re repitamos esa palabra. Explanation. Explanation. Esta es explicación. 
Oh, le voy a dar una explicación. Let me, let me explain. Let me give you an explanation, right? Make a mistake. I'm sorry, me falta una palabra acá. Make a mistake. Make a mistake. Mm, esto es cometer errores o equivocarse. So we oh, make mistakes. Yeah. Mm, there we go. Explanation, make mistakes. Explanation. And make mistakes. Maybe. Oh, okay, one moment. I write. Mm, okay, no problem. Explanation. Mm -hmm. And make a mistake. And make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, explanation, explicación. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. Le voy a dejar este ejercicio. I'm going to give you this little exercise. El ejercicio, mis, es el siguiente. Como estamos tratando de eh, pensar menos, traducirlo menos del español a inglés, uh, quiero que me mande un audio. So, un minuto, no va a ser mucho. Un minuto, one minute. Un audio de un minuto, right? Y no ahorita, sino puede ser mañana, cuando tenga un par de... Un minuto libre nada más le va a tomar. So, me va a hablar eh, sobre cometer errores. About making mistakes. ¿Qué opina usted de cometer errores? What do you think about making mistakes? ¿Es normal? ¿Es común? ¿Está bien? ¿Está mal? Su opinión, right? Porque la idea es ir armando oraciones. Pero súper importante, no lo escriba. Don't write it. Como ahorita me acaba de contar... Vamos a hacer lo mismo, pero va a grabarse, right, dando su opinión sobre cometer errores, un minuto, cabalito el minuto, cuéntelo de ser posible. And necesito que revise, que al terminar de grabarse, se escuche y revise las palabras sí. que usted iba diciendo, you know. Si, por ejemplo, en vez de explanation, para decir la palabra explicación, dijo otra palabra, o oh, cambia, la vuelva a grabarse, la cambia, right? O, el, o me lo puede enviar, lo escucho, eh, hacemos las correcciones que hay que hacer, mm -hmm. right? Pero la idea es, no lo, intente no pensarlo en español. Váyase como en automático, right? Para ver cómo nos va. Y vamos a ir así, you know, pedacitos por pedacitos, agregando más información en... en the, Viendo si necesitamos bajarle, subirle. But so far, creo que you, give it, you do a very nice job. So usted participa mucho, así que esto se va a hacer rápido. Solo es eso, right? Evitar pensarlo tanto en español, evitar traducirlo e irnos sí. más en automático. So, okay. cuando tenga tiempo, mándelo, Miss. Send it to me, ¿ok? okay. Uh, okay. Already, nice, nice. So, oh, ya le robé más tiempo. So, gracias, Wendy, no, por quedarse no, por acá. Thank, thank you so much. For... Me quedo thank pendiente. I, I, I dream, I, I sleep, and no, I, I, I get up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. So, I sleep well, right? And when you are ready, send me the order. Make up and in test loud. Thank you, Wendy. Have a good night. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. See you. See ya. Blessings. See you. Blessings. <laughs>